Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, here to discuss a concept that I had some years ago now. It's been probably 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, a design for an antenna trap. When you have an antenna, and you want to operate it on multiple bands, you can take advantage of a device called a trap. What a trap actually is, is a parallel resonant circuit that serves to choke off signals at a specific frequency along the radiating element of an antenna. This is your radiating element right here. A trap usually consists of an air core inductor and a large high voltage fixed capacitor tuned to a specific frequency so that it will block signals at that frequency but allow others to pass. Traps are used in multi-band antennas rather extensively and usually they are air core solenoidal coils and they are mechanically affixed so that they form part of the antenna element. An excellent example is a trap vertical. If you've ever seen a trap vertical where you have aluminum tubing for the radi radiating element, this of course would be turned on its side vertically. The coil goes uh, around the radiating elements as they are joined by some kind of an insulator. Uh, and so to that end, what I will do is take us briefly to the moons of Saturn and then return to show you the physical construction of a typical antenna trap. This is aluminum tubing right here, and this is aluminum tubing right here. Again, tipped on its side so I can fit it better on the screen for you. And then there's some kind of a rigid plastic material, and the tubing fits over that plastic, and this might be a gap of something on the order of six inches. You uh, wind your coil around this around this uh, form like that and then the capacitor is somehow affixed inside the coil perhaps outside of the coil and then the whole thing is enclosed in a weatherproof sort of like a can if you've ever seen one of these things and you will find uh, that you can use two or more of them in an antenna to make it operate on multiple high-frequency ham radio bands. Well, I began to wonder about this design, and I began to get a little skeptical of the way that it was put together. It just seemed kind of unwieldy to have the capacitor outside of the coil or inside of the coil, whichever, and to have a solenoidal coil, which had, you know, you know how the... Um, magnetic fields in, around a solenoidal coil go, how the magnetic flux goes. It wants to go quite a ways out into space from the coil and if you block that off with some kind of an enclosure like a like a can, aren't you causing some problems there uh, with the coil? Aren't you introducing loss and things like that? Well I I guess I really don't know specifically other than to say that Saturn is still there, and its moons are still there, and we are still here. So I came up with another idea for uh, the, the trap design, and I called it a toroidal trap. What I did was I took one of those large toroidal cores they look like donuts and they're made out of powdered iron and they may have a diameter of up to about two inches and an inside diameter of about an inch and they're made out of powdered iron and you wind your coil around this donut like thing 
And when you do that, something very interesting happens. All of the magnetic flux in that entire coil is contained inside of that core. None of it gets out. So this is a self-shielding type of inductor. So I thought, why not run the antenna element right through the hole in this in one of these toroids? And then use as the capacitor overlap between adjacent antenna sections. So consider aluminum tubing here. You're looking straight at the thing sideways on. Another section of aluminum tubing here. Significant difference in their diameters. And then you slide this in there with polyethylene, a polyethylene plastic sleeve around the smaller tubing like this, which forms the dielectric of a capacitor. And you can vary this distance, this overlap distance, to tweak the capacitance that you get between these two adjacent antenna sections say the lower section here and the upper section there. Imagine the top of the antenna towards the right here and the bottom of the antenna towards the left. And it's a vertical antenna. Well, then you surround this point right here with the toroid. You put the toroid right there and run these elements right through that, right through the the hole in the donut. So what you end up with after taking another brief vacation on the moons of Saturn is something that looks like this in in the real world. All your trap looks like is a little donut around your antenna and the entire magnetic field of this inductor is contained within the powdered iron material of that donut and the capacitance is formed by the overlap between these sections. So there is no need for this metal can. The structure is physically stronger because the tubing is overlapping rather than being attached to some kind of a plastic cylinder or rod or stick. It's physically stronger it keeps the magnetic field entirely within itself, and it ought to have a higher Q factor, meaning a sharp resonant response. So I actually built one of these things and tested it in the laboratory of the place where I worked at that time, or the place where I was a consulting engineer. I guess I I quit my job with them, but the president of the company really liked me and he kept me on as a consultant. And I worked in their lab and found that this thing had a resonant frequency somewhere on the order of 24 megahertz. Now back then, there was no amateur band in 24 megahertz, so this was entirely done within the confines of a test laboratory. But I, I did find, in fact, that it behaved just like a trap and I actually sent it to an engineer who verified my findings and then I made the mistake of trying to get the thing patented. My advice to you is that unless you have deep pockets and a great deal of patience, tolerance, and ability to put up with baloney, do not Repeat, do not go off on your own and hire a patent attorney. They will make a sucker out of you. It is a racket. Avoid it. That is just my opinion, of course. Nevertheless, I still have the technical papers for this device in my nerd, uh, nerd castle here where I have my amateur radio station, W1GV. And I'm proud to say that my antenna system
contains not a single trap in it. Because <laughs> I don't really believe in the doggone things. I'd rather have an antenna that doesn't have any such things. That's just me. Stan Gibalisco signing off, saying 73 for now, and so long.